welcome to OnlineGroomingSchool.com. My name is Yvonne, and uh, today we're going to teach you how to groom an Airedale. Uh, this is Puppy. Say hello to Puppy. Puppies are regular. And Puppy, come and say hi. <laughs> he tells you slobbers a lot. That's that's his thing. And uh, we got a, we, what we did is we started one side. We actually finished one side of a Puppy. And uh, we're gonna show you how to do the same on the other side, okay? So you can see back over here, he's in a full coat on the right. And on his left side, he is in an Airedale trim, okay? So we did one side for you, and what we're gonna do is gonna match the other side. And then we might come back here and do a, little, a couple of finishing touches, but for the purpose of sh uh, showing you before and after, uh, we went ahead and did one side. And I'll go ahead and hold his head so you can see the difference from the front view. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's happy for us there. First I want to do is I want to show you the tools we'll be using today. Uh, regardless of what you're going to do, what type of uh, dog you're going to groom, um, a good cordless clipper, this is a wall cordless clipper, and it has an ascending and descending blade, so it goes from a 9 to a number 40. You have a, a two-speed Andis clipper, and that's the one that's, it's, it's not cordless, it's actually um, attached to the wall there. We also have uh, two attachment cones we're going to be using today. Uh, this is an Oster brand, we're going to use a, a one-inch one inch Oster comb and a half an inch Oster comb. We're also going to be using a number 30, and those are going to be when we use them with the attachment combs. A number seven finishing blade and a ten. Okay. We're also going to have a, a greyhound comb, otherwise known as a, a bluffing comb. I have eight and a half straights here, eight and a half curves, thinning shears, and most importantly is your grooming guide. We use the All Breed Dog Grooming Guide by Sam Cole. You can see again this one is pretty beat up. We use it. Okay. Maybe it's about time I buy a new one. We'll see. Okay, but here is, this is what Mr. Cole does. He basically outlines the, the clip for you by, uh, like, you know, color by number, but we clip by number here, or follow directions by number. So here he, he references a number eight, so you would go to number eight on the next page and follow the instructions as to what to do. And also has, um, showed you how to, how to clip with the lines with a head and a basic overview of what the head should look like. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we always use this book. This is your Bible. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to start with, uh, uh, by clipping the body first. Now, uh, Puppy has already gotten a bath. So he's good to go. So I'm going to start with a pattern. I'm going to do the pattern on the, on the body. So he's fully bathed and he's uh, brushed out and everything and dried. Correct. Okay. All right. So we're going to come over and go over to the side. I got my seven finishing blades. All right. And I'm going to start, I really want to start at the base of the skull, but for the purpose right now, I'm just going to get as close to the neck as possible. Okay, to stretch, you have, sometimes you have to stretch the skin a little bit. And see all that coat is just coming off. You can tell he's ticklish. That tickle? <laughs> okay. And I'm going to go... Again, this is in the Sam Cole grooming guide that shows you the lines. Okay. We're going to go right about here and start going down a little bit. And as we get closer to this line, we're going to... We call... We're going to flick the, uh, the, uh, the, the clipper. And you'll see I have my hand underneath him. I just don't want him to sit down and make a sudden move. So I want to make sure he, I'm, I'm aware. I'm not necessarily holding him up. But if he suddenly moves, then, then I can, you know, uh, mess up the lines there. And you're going with the grain, I see. Always with the grain. See how I, I just lick it as I get closer to the line. 
How do you know where to go to the line? I mean, what determines where you the just, line is? Like, here's your tuck up. This is that the, the part where you have the flank area. That's that loose skin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, see? And if you basically, if you go like this, wherever your finger stop is probably where I would go. Basically where his, his waist is at. So I'm going to go and just start going down. And, of course, the idea is, is to, uh, again, follow the book. It kind of gives you an idea when to stop and uh, getting both sides to match is probably the tricky part. Okay, right over here, the line goes right above. This is the hip, so I want to go right up here and I want to kind of match it with the other side. It's very ticklish. Again, flicking the clipper as I get closer to that line. I'm going to step back here and just kind of look to see how much further down I have to go just to match the other side. If you go on the other side, you'll see that the line is a little further down. But I'm not going to go all, I'm not going to match it completely. What I'm going to do, I'll show in a little bit, we're going to use an attachment comb. Okay, so the tail, same blade that we use on the body. So the tail is completely short. What blade are you using on the body? We're using a number seven finishing blade. Always be careful with the tip of the tail. There's a small little vein there. Um, and if you just, you know, slightly nick it, it won't bleed a lot, but if he's a tail wagger, and he wags, and wags his tail a lot, he'll just keep hitting it up against something and it can just keep opening it up. What is that vein at? Right around here, this area here. Oh, I see. So always be cautious and careful there. Okay? So now we've got our basic line. It doesn't take long to get through it. The next line is you just go across this way. You don't go above here like you did on this side. Okay? I'm going to try to match it again. I want him to stand up and sit down. Again, flicking my blade, my clipper, as I get closer to that line. All right. And then look to see if it matches the other side. Now on the, on the chest of the Airedale, you don't pull straight across, you know, you're going to shave this here, but you don't go straight ahead. You give it like a little box, okay? So we're going to create that little box. So here's that box I was telling you about. Why do you do that? Just That's just the, the, the standards for the... We'll, we'll, go, we'll go back and look at the Sam uh, Cole's grooming guide. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, we'll go back to the neck area. Right now we're just going to concentrate on the body. Let's see if I can show you. Because, because basically, it's, it's, it's the way he's, he's indicating to do it. Mm -hmm. Here's a front view of the chest. I say just a little box. And that's okay. what we're doing. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Okay, so the next thing now is I just want to have a look to see just if I've gone far enough down on this side. It looks like I have. Okay, so what we're doing now is we already did the, the pattern. And I'm just brushing it out a little bit. Using a slicker brush. We're using a slicker brush. Okay. And we're going to blend this line a little bit better with an attachment comb. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a number 30 blade. Whenever you use an attachment comb, you use a 30 blade. So we're using a 30 blade. And we attach the attachment comb. 
This is uh, what what size comb is this? This is an Oster half inch attachment comb. Half inch. And it'll leave about a half an inch on the coat. So I'm just going to comb it up slightly here. Okay. And I'm not going to go all the way down the leg. I'm just going to go in this area here. And see how it's just making that kind of more smooth. Mm -hmm. We want a seamless look. Basically, scissoring could do this, but this is a lot easier. We get here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Kinda just making it so that it's not so obvious that there's a line there. We want it to be kind of natural looking. I'm not going in like this because I don't want to get rid of the, uh, the skirt. I'm just going straight down. Same thing in the front legs. And we're going to get that little box area. I left that box alone when I did the other side so we can do it when we came over on this side. So now, as you can see, it's just basically smoothed it out for us. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that, what we, what we use there, like again, is a half an inch, half inch attachment comb. Doesn't matter what brand you use, just you can use, you know, Andis, Wall, Oster. Uh, just look for the half an inch comb. Okay? So now we're going to switch over to the one inch comb. Put the one inch comb on there. And the whole idea here is to allow our attachment combs to do most of the work for us. Now, the drawback behind an attachment comb is the hair has to be practically. I mean, there's, there can't be any, you know, knots on the coat. There's a good possibility I'm going to run into a snag. I'll show you what we're going to do when that happens. Okay? So, I got a one-inch comb because I want to leave more length. I don't want to take off as much as I did here. See how I just got a little bit of a snag there? Like what you can do is go back in there. And I can see there's a little mat there. And comb that out a little bit so your comb can go through the coat. So one of the things you have to remember with with um, attachment comb again, if the coat has to be, you know, fully brushed out. If you run into some snags, um, sometimes I'll, I'll try to comb it out. But what I'll do is. I'll just get through the part that the, the clipper is allowing me to get through, and I'll scissor the rest. Okay? I'm not going to get hung up on trying to get every little mat, mat that comes in here. Okay? See, I'm getting caught in some area. That's okay. I'll go back. And get it with my scissors next time. And again, I'm just going straight down the legs. Try this side over here. And it's just taking off the, you know, the very top edges. So that's one inch comb attachment. Yes. Um, you want to create what a tubular? Uh, well, yes. What we're doing is creating tubular legs. Uh, just like the other side. So what I end up doing here, obviously if, if there's a longer coat you would see like a lot of hair coming off. But you know, again, the, the, the one inch comb is not going to take off more than one inch. So let's assume his coat was three inches. It would clip it down to one inch. But because he's already rather short, it's only taking off a little bit. So now what I'm doing is just, I, I'm combing it up and just picking up anything my, my clipper couldn't get through or my scissors didn't, you know, uh, the clipper didn't, didn't pick up. Always have your scissors up or down. You don't want to go this way because you're going to create a line. The only exception to the rule is that if you're in a tight spot, you can come in like this. 
that nobody can really see in there. See that little mm -hmm. mat right there? I'm just going to take that off. So I'm going to try and get in here. I'm going to show you how we're going to get in here just like this. Just want a nice little round area here. Like little chaps, like a um, cowboy. Okay? Again, just creating those that tubular leg. And I'm just keeping my, my, my um, hand here. I don't want him to sit down. You do not want your dog sitting down while you're working on the body. It's like your hairstylist giving you a haircut while you're laying down. It's not going to work. The only time they, want, they can sit down is when you're working on their, on their face. Okay, here's the hawk right here. We're just going in a curve like this and then going straight down here. Again, just combing up, fluffing up with your fluffing comb. And just working. See, I still have my hand underneath him. Just working it down until it's, you know, just getting rid of, rid of, of the, uh, the frizzes. Now we got to get that foot to be more round. It's already round, but we want it to be tighter. So we're going to take our, our curves. Make sure your curves are not doing this or like this. Keep them. Uh, a vertical and up against the foot and start clipping with your curves. Hence your curves will create a curve. Okay, once you've got the basic size of the of, of the of the foot, now you can raise it like this. Stop. They're going to be real sensitive about their feet. Now I can clean that up a little bit. Stop. Good puppy. What? Puppy came in with gum on the inside of his pads, so his pads are a little sensitive right now. We were able to gum? Get yep. <laughs> How did you clean it out? Uh, basically, there there are um, solutions out there that that will help to loosen up. Peanut butter works good too. Peanut butter, put yeah. it on there and just get it out. Yeah, yeah let him lick it out. Uh, but it's basically an oily substance that helps it out. I uh, use that, and I use the number uh, uh, thirty fillet to uh, clip it out. You learn that in the in the pet hygiene instructional mm. DVD. That foot is looking nice. We yeah. were trying to make them uh, nice color shoes there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Year round wear. Let me zoom in on this so people can see this. This is pretty nice. So now he's just getting his. He already had the, the pattern there, it's just that it had grown out. Huh. You know? Okay. Again, using my fluffing comb. And just, it's probably a little difficult to see on camera, but I can see all the little hairs are sticking out. There are some things you can rush through, uh, but when you're basically right now, what you're doing is sculpturing. You can't rush through that. It's like what my mom used to do back in, I guess, it'd be the 60s. Fluff up and sculpt her and put a lot of hairspray on. The, what were they called? The updos? I understand they're coming back. So now we're going to do the skirt here. Okay. 
I'm just going to look, look over the other side so I can get an idea of how long we left the skirt on this side so we're on the same page. We want to be able to go at this angle, again, creating that nice little uh, 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 waist here. Okay. Yeah. If you're either left handed or right handed, you're going to have trouble on one side. So I usually, I'm better on the other side, so I, I usually start in the middle. And then work myself up. I've got my hand here, so I make sure I know where the flank is at. I don't want any accidents. Why'd you get really serious there? Don't worry, I'm not going to take anything off if you stop breathing. See that? That's just going down at an angle there. You're going to use your straights for that. You know, it's common sense. Straights, it's going to create a straight line. Use your straights. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to step back a little bit, make sure nothing's sticking out. Now we're going to repeat what we just did on the front leg, I mean, excuse me, on the back leg, but um, do the same thing on the front leg. Rough it up. One thing about uh, uh, wiry hair, it can be deceiving. Just when you think you got every all the little mats out, you find a couple more. I think Puppy was coming here when they first adopted Puppy or got Puppy and they couldn't figure out what to name him so Puppy it is. So his actual name is Puppy then, huh? Yeah. Oh, he's not you know, a like puppy. You like when you get a cat you go, here kitty kitty, you don't know what to name him. Well, he was like, here Puppy. How old is he now? Huh? I think he's like, you know what, I think he's like two or three years old. He's either 14 years of age or 21 our age. He's a teenager. Teenager. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pick this up so I can get in here. Now I might get a little bit of resistance for Puppy because I told you, remember I said I found some gum. So he's, a, and I just saw something out of his place here. So don't, don't hung, get hung up if you find something. Go get it. Um, he's, well, he's not giving me too much resistance. I know his paw, his pad is, is kind of uh, raw because it's pink in there from what I got out of there. So I'm going to tell the owner just to, if he's licking, it's because he's a little sore from trying to get whatever that was, that piece of gum. It looked like tar or gum or something. Why you got so serious? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get uh, the rounds in here. I want to get, get that done first. Again, I have my hand underneath him over on this side. I want him to sit. Some dogs, you have to uh, put like a harness around their belly. You're okay. To keep them up. Especially elderly dogs, overweight dogs. Bring on me. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean up the back of the pad here. Okay. Let me see. Stand up straight. Got to see where we're at. So I've got to get a little bit more. just how narrow I want to. Obviously you want to match the this one with, with the other leg. So the same thing other tubular leg look and the other tubular leg. 
This is where those scissor exercises come in handy. You know, you'll you'll get yes. Uh, <laughs> You like my cologne? Is it licking you? Oh, you're smelling me already. <laughs> I smell something. I got my lunch you smell that I get it in my hair. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, yeah, you want the same, the same tubular look, getting it to match. You notice I'm bending over. That's what you got to do in this business. So I guess it's good to keep stretched every day and exercise oh, yes. and in shape and... Yes. And, uh, it will keep you in shape. It'll, it'll, it'll keep you limber. I know groomers that's, uh, that that groom sitting down. Lazy. Uh, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> cameraman. Um, because you know when you're on your feet all day, it it, it it's difficult. You know you start to get problems with your legs. But um, I, I I'm for one I'm just not that coordinated. I can't groom sitting down. It does take a little coordination, I think, for some reason. Hmm. For me, anyways. Okay. So we're just, I'm going to continue uh, doing that until I get, when I'm satisfied that they both look the same. And then we're going to come back um, to the head, finishing touches, and uh, give me a couple minutes and we'll come back and I'll show you how to do the head, okay? So here we are with Puppy. We're going to go ahead and do the head. I'm going to switch him over on this side. Come on, move your head over here. This way. <laughs> no, this way. There you go. Thank you. All right. Um, we did the right side. As you can see, I'm just going to brush him out so you can kind of see what we're tr trying to do here. All right. On the head on the Airedale, you use a number 10 blade. So we switch to number 10 blade, and we're going to get started, and we'll start working on it. Going with the grain to the base of the skull. Basically is where we left off on the 7 on the rest of the body. So his head grain hair grows with the body grain? Yeah, you can see the way it's growing. Uh-huh. I mean, you can even feel the way it's growing. You get a lot more tension going this way than this way. So it all just basically goes like that. The hair grows that, that way. Okay, let me see. Oh, good. I'm going to do the sides. I'm going to do the ear. Uh, draw your attention to this little mole here. Um, whenever you're clipping, you know, try to feel for moles. Mm -hmm. oh, you got that close enough? Mm -hmm. And then what? <laughs> uh, you just have to try to avoid that. You know, you might, you might need to go around and just maybe not press so hard. Um, is there a possibility you might hit nick on a, a mole? Yes, they kind of bleed a lot and um, they'll stop, but they're messy. Uh, I would imagine that it kind of hurts a little bit. Eventually, they do grow back, unfortunately. All right. So the same blade, number 10. He's got some ear issues. This is not a dirty ear. It's just part of his pigmentation. First time he came in here, I swore I spent a whole half a day trying to clean that ear out. So I figured out that it wasn't dirt anymore. Okay. All right, now we're going to get our line. Our line is to go in the corner of the eye and down. Stop, stop. You know, it's okay to talk to them and say, no, you know, just let's get through this. Just going right underneath the beard there. All right, let me see where we're at. You want to do it with her mouth closed. All 
good puppy. Thank you. Right there on the beard area, huh? Yes. So what we're going to do... Mm -hmm. and then start working on the eyebrows. Okay. Down. What do you want to accomplish with the eyebrow? Basically, we want to thin the eyebrow out, so we want to create a V first. So before I, 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 I thin it out, I'm going to create my V. Okay. I'm going to touch this one up a little bit on this side. And basically, I'm taking the tip of the, the eye here as a guide and going towards the middle of the nose. So this is your V. Okay, shh, shh, shh. don't move, don't move. Good boy, good boy. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sometimes you got to work a little fast. Don't spend too much time on it. So if all possible. Now what I'm going to do, because as you can see it's a little bit fuller than the other side, I'm going to take my thinning shears. And relax that hair a little bit. It's just, it's it's just too much. So it can lay a little bit flatter. Okay. See how it's starting to look a little more a little sleek there? Yes, and he has a uni bra and we're going to leave that on there. Let me see. Let me see. Stop. Good. You know, you have to get the dog to, you know, understand what you want him to do. And if that means repeating yourself, um, holding him, then that's what you got to do. Okay. Last place we want to do some thinning is right in here. Right underneath the eye. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. Stop. Good. I know. We gotta get this done. You gotta match. <laughs> no, 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 no. So we'll just do it a little bit at a time, you know. Sometimes it's what he's tolerating. Let me see what we're at. We're getting really close. And then we're just going to do the bridge of the nose a little bit. And then we're going to step back and see where we're at. We still got to uh, clip that uh, ear a little bit with a, with the um, straights, and I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, you like me better on this side. All right. <laughs> Down. <laughs> okay, we need to get this done today, puppy. Not tomorrow. Good. Thank you. a little bit. Gotta get the ends of it. Use your finger as a guide. You don't want to accidentally get the ear leather. Now if you're in doubt, just don't go that close. get that V a little sharper. No, no. Down, down, down. Stay, stay, stay. Good boy. Good boy. See, just a little sharper. <laughs> okay. 
Now, puppy hair just really makes a mess of his mouth. He slobbers <laughs> a lot. lot. So there's not a whole lot I can do. Um, <laughs> I can't clean. keep up. Can't with keep up with it. <laughs> He's just moving so fast. Um, <laughs> so this is kind of puppy's thing. He drools. So what do you do with the beard? Well, Kaya wants him in this in this in this look. She's aware that that he's got a sloppy beard. Um, I mean, if he wanted to have a clean beard, we can just shave the muzzle, but then he wouldn't be an Airedale. Mm -hmm. So that's just one of the things about um, any terrier. You have like your schnauzers in, in, in wire fox terriers. They have this coat here, and if they tend to um, slobber a lot, that's what you're going to end up with. Hmm. Um, one of the suggestions I always make is that we shave down here. And that's what we did with her, so I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay, ideally you want this beard there. Okay, and right, we're going to take that off because she wants it off. So I want to make sure, um, you, Cameron, you've got the look of the head before we shave that. Or we can just leave it, we'll just show you the finished look. But there's nothing wrong that if you had to shave this, you could shave this for just for the uh, hygiene purposes. Because the mother wants to shave. She wants the to owner. clean, yeah. Well, we might as well show them how you gonna show do that. Okay. Sure. But there you are. That's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be long hair. Okay. Oh, okay. Doing it with a ten. Stop. Oh boy. See how that just kind of is going to help a little bit to keep the mess down. But it doesn't smell great either. It's basically saliva. <laughs> <laughs> we just bathe you. So it's okay to get a little bit, you know, think outside the box. Okay, so you've got a uh, air down here and you have to do this. It's not, you know, the end of the world. But if you're doing a show, a show then yes, you're not going to place. <laughs> right, whenever you get near here to clip, you want to make sure you, you have a firm hand on the muzzle. You don't want to accidentally have them step their uh, tongue out and you getting a piece of it. Okay, so let me just have a little look see here, see where we're at with him. Okay, so we're just giving a little last look. Make sure we got everything, everything's left in place. It seems as we're on track here. There is puppy the Airedale, so if you come on stand with confidence, put your tail up. There you go. <laughs> okay. So there's Puppy the Airedale and the Airedale clip. I always recommend make sure you watch the video at least three times and look over the Sam Cole grooming guide and uh, you know have fun with it. Practice, practice makes perfect. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.